That That's always level. freshens me up because uh, no matter if I have had less sleep or whatever, I wake up from the bed, go on, get a good hot shower. Wonderful. And it's then that I realize that how many blessings we have and I've take it for granted because not everybody gets a you know flowing hot shower in their bathrooms that's very true and i think uh, we should be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because uh, these are small things which we take for granted a lot and when they're not the part of our life then we realize the importance of how privileged we were when we are yes. living with these luxuries or with these basic necessities i don't know how you categorize or label them but uh, for him since we belong to ptv and i feel very proud being associated with with this very old institute that has trained so many any minds that has contributed so much to our intellectual legacy uh, to our pop history to our uh, drama history and uh, to our another uh, i mean level of the history that it has created and especially the golden legacy of ptv still uh, rages on and people still remember lots of programs lots of series lots of serials that were produced and they find traction not just in the south asia in the subcontinent but as far as to central and south america a continent which is not just uh, far away and it does not uh, enjoy the cultural proximity but with us but the storytelling the dramas yes. they were so powerful they were so gripping uh, the dialogues and this is what we were discussing when the red light was not uh, on uh, that uh, we had such a great characters and one of the great character was uncle sarkam and absolutely and hazra i must add here that i'm so proud of uh, being a part to that generation which has yes. seen those simple times yes. and finding that happiness and joy out of those simple times and not to forget google is paying its tribute to uh, farooq kesar who played uncle sargam and made our childhood so beautiful and i remember once i attended one of his shows live Wonderful. and uh, i i can't begin to explain how joyful that was how elated i was sitting there watching something live which i had been watching on television screen i'm screens. sorry i'm interjecting you but yeah. for him do you remember this tv when we were young there was a whole exercise <laughs> tuning it in and then there was so much and the fun. manual antenna of course yes. and you know you had to constantly fiddle with the antenna to make sure that the signals are uh, being properly streamlined aa gaya hai aa gaya hai yes 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 <laughs> the, the, there was a whole exercise with two people one sitting in front of the tv one in the front of the rooftop where he was fiddling with the antenna or whatever um and uh, i think this is such a joyful and wonderful time and uh, i do remember that there was a particular fight especially amongst us sibling over the remote right so we used to i think to, all siblings used to yes yes that. we had those memories right especially people who were born at the end of the century uh, but i don't think so these kids can enjoy those memories and those beautiful uh, i would say power struggle that we had in our household about who, and, who and will get and i must say uh, hazra that uh, uncle sargam or farooq qaisar he made sure that puppeteering uh, which is something yes. really yes. uh common to our culture yes. that gains more and more popularity yes. among children which it did as a matter of yes. fact yes, yes. children learned children watched and that's how he made sure that it gains more popularity among all the people who are watching him and not just in children even yes. the adults of that time yes and 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 that trauma made sure that the puppetry which is a very artistic expression uh, of a folk 
folklore of our culture remains intact uh, especially on our tv screens because uh, back in the old days it was a medium through which uh, messages and dramas were conveyed uh, back in the uh, sutudu society of some particular message of some particular uh, social uh, message that was broadcasted or that was i would say rather uh, uh, being sent or disseminated to the community level and then it was translated into the broadcast media and i think we will always remember the contribution absolutely. of uncle sargam um, and uh, farooq and Hajra, uh, absolutely you're right and uh, talking about that time talking about the simplicity of time yes. and how simple things used to give us joy used to give us happiness yes. we weren't into brands we weren't True. into expensive things it was just meeting people simple things True. and simplicity in general right. which would give us joy and happiness and that was there was a lot of contentment if we compare it yes. with today's world and, and and if you would analyze the dialogues of uncle sargam the brevity of his dialogues and i mean he would say convey such a depth of meaning in such short sentences and such simple words yes. uh, that it ha holds so much power i think we would certainly miss that because uh, i always keep saying that we are living in an age where there is a wealth of information but poverty of attention but back in those times this was not the case and, and we'll talking about what you just said yes. uh, quoting that uh, poverty of attention wealth of information in this age i would like to connect this with our first segment which is about simplicity overall and how our religion uh, it proposes that yes. we should all live a simple lives with simplicity and that is the only thing which is going to give us contentment so without further ado i would love to introduce our first guest for the first segment that is professor tariq ijaz sahab he happens to be a religious scholar professor sahab assalamu alaikum and welcome to btv world thank you Right, so Professor Sab, let's kick start our conversation. And obviously, um, Islam encourages the way of moderation, right? And uh, nowadays, we see that the dominant ideology, and Fahim and I always talk about, is liberalism. And he, like he was talking about back in the old days, we were not thinking about very expensive clothes. We were not thinking about very expensive brands, furniture, or very expensive schooling. Uh, but and also, we see that with the passage of the time, there's so much complexities that has arisen um, with the very materialistic inflow into our lives so how do you think we can revert back to our uh, prophetic tradition which focused on simplicity which focused on moderation bismillah rahman rahim the topic of today's discussion at simplicity its importance from an islamic perspective you are right uh, that in the time period in which we are going through we are almost influenced by lots of uh, theories and philosophies specifically coming from the world which does not have the context that Islamic world has means the liberalism materialism and you see just only sticking to this world only so there are mm. two world views basically mm -hmm. uh, you are asking how we can revert back to our origin mm. our Islamic yes. values which you have rightly said that Islam is the path of moderation mm -hmm avoiding two extremes so this path is possible only when we are able to understand islamic world view of our life in this world and how it is connected with the life hereafter yes so this basically this is the world view mm -hmm. when we talk about all these luxuries of life from western perspective so of course their world view is totally different from the one which we have been given through the teachings of quran and sunnah their world view is based simply on materialistic gains on the things which are perceivable which are conceivable but the things which are beyond our conceptions the things which are realities which are beyond our comprehension mm -hmm. these are totally disassociated from western world view Right. Whereas Islamic <coughs> perspective on the world view is that the life of a Muslim in this world, mm -hmm. he is not left here in this world just living the life as per his desires and wishes right. mm. without being controlled and governed by the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. Right. A Muslim's life is also be al always to be regulated 
by that supremacy of Islamic law. This is how when it is being governed by Islamic law, then we can understand that now Islamic worldview is going to take place in the life, in the vision, in the minds and the, in the thoughts of the individual, those who are desirous just to live a prosperous, prosperous life here in this world and also not forgetting the reality once they also have to be answerable in the life hereafter, whatever they are doing over here in this world. Accountability, you're yes, right, sir. Yes. Now, there's something that I want to um, uh, propose here and talk about, and that is something that Hajra earlier mentioned, um, schooling, private schooling, right? Now, if we talk about simplicity, we should all yes. be getting schooled under one roof. True. Everyone should be having True. equal sort of education, but we don't True. see that happening. Is that because there is a decline in quality of education in the government school system or people don't care about the quality anymore? That's why they spend more and more in order to get their children into private schools so that they can get quality education perhaps or be better off in lives in their future? Is it because the Muslims have lost the, uh, the concept of quality that they have to give their best? Is it because the teachers have lost it, their, their, their interest in teaching people? Yeah. Basically, primarily, this becomes the duty of an Islamic state hmm. to provide quality education, quality health, quality uh, life to the people, to the peop citizens of the state. Definitely, if the state is not going to fulfill its duty towards the fulfillment of the needs of its uh, residents, so there are chances that, that certain private organizations, they emerge up and they are just going to fulfill that vacuum which has been left unattended by the governance system. So here in this case when we see different models of education in our country, hmm. one is purely the government sector education, the second one is the edu private education sector and it certain has different layers as well. Yes. I mean the one is highly elite belonging to serve, you see even the middle class person can just dream about you see getting admission on those because of you see the heavy uh, amount of the charges the fee that is going to be given to submitted to them and similarly but the dreams the wishes and desires of everybody just to get an excellent education to teach their children in an atmosphere where they become quite uh, a person, th those who are definitely useful and beneficial yes. for their society as well as as a Muslim, their role become very productive. So these are some of the very complications that are almost connected. What is the role of the state? What is the role of the citizen, the individuals? I mean, this is a sort of reciprocal relationship of the governance system and the society, how they <coughs> have to just draw the line about what are the duties of the states and what are the responsibilities of the citizens in order just to build up a society that can really reflect the society based on the concept of welfare. Right, so when we talk about simplicity hmm. and obviously if we reflect back back in our childhood days or in our parents' childhood days, I think we're not talking a very far off uh, era because for him we can see that there was a very simple life, they were leading a very simple life and we were talking about the dramas of 60s and 70s that reflected the simplicity of that yes. era, right? So, uh, uh, Professor Saab, since you um, have very keenly observed all of this situation going on, uh, and, and do you think that the capitalism is the elephant in the room and we need to address it because the overproduction of the things, I mean, every year there's a new mobile launches and there's a craze among the people that they want to buy new models, same goes for the cars and mm. I mean lots of other things, mm. right, the brands and whatnot. Um, and do you believe that it's very difficult to now adjust our lifestyles because we are so attuned to the luxuries and these luxuries have become our needs they are not our wants they're not the wants anymore true yes, yes. basically uh, i mean all these brands coming up every second day almost the one model becomes a better than the previous one oh. all these things they are part and parcel of human life we can't definitely ignore them we cannot ignore ignore them at all but what is the way forward given by Islam, by the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah? How can we accommodate our life even in such circumstances where we are exposed with such luxurious like, things in our life? The Quran in Surah Al-Isra has given this very beautiful conception of moderation. Don't keep your hand tied to your neck so strong that giving nothing to anybody 
and not stretch it wide open that you give everything and sit back consumed and blamed. Right. This is the way of moderation. It depends upon the societal norms. It depends upon what things we are going to consume in our society. It depends upon its relation with the permissibility of our religion. I mean, religiously, if something is not permissible, not allowed, then of course, you see, going to adopt that thing in our life will be called something which is known in the Holy Quran as Al-Israf and Al-Tabzir. So Israf is a general extravagance in daily life on different occasions whereas tabzir is something which is known to be to spend your money your uh, wealth on the things which has been which have been made unlawful in the teachings of quran and sunnah also sir i wanted to ask something and really particularly grinds my gears when i think about it if we go to uh, a society like the japanese society although uh, technologically they're very very advanced but when we look at the culture when yeah. we look at the emerging cultures of theirs ev evolving culture of theirs we see a minimalistic approach a simplistic approach people are going towards that yeah. that not owning huge houses or mm -hmm. a lot of material mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that's not going to give you happiness mm -hmm. and contentment simplicity mm -hmm. is so i think that they they're following the islamic model Definitely. in a much better manner mm -hmm. than the practicing so-called practicing muslims yes, really you are right because when we see the islamic model existing at the time period of rightly guided caliphs that is the real model for us just to explore what type of living standard was over there Hmm. I would just like to narrate one story which is which almost deals with all these aspects. Right. At the time period of Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab ta'ala, in one of the cities, a fire broke out. And finally people they gathered just to pour water in it in order to just extinguish it. But it just getting what uh, right. the fire was raising higher and higher and higher. Finally, the people, the group of the people, they came to Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab ta'ala, and they asked, you see, we have done a lot of efforts, but we have not been successful so far. They shared their great worry over this matter, since half of the city was burnt down. At this very point, what you have referred, you see the life of the Japanese people or hmm. the European people, almost very near to that of the real simplicity. What Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab is saying to the people, he say, the fire will never extinguished by putting water in it. What is important to pour on the fire is, he is saying that this fire is one of the signs of Allah. And the flame which is emerging out of it is that you see it is because of the miserliness. Because of the miserliness, you people are supposed just to go back and distribute your breads amongst the poor people. And also just repent upon this attribute of miserliness and also share your arms given to the people, to the society. And this is how it will almost cut down the flames and then finally the blessings of Allah will be revealed upon you. Means just this story tells us that how the conception of the caliphate time period where they were almost associated that the amount of money you are having or anything you are having you are just supposed just to share it with the community around you with the people those who are down student segment of human society if you are sharing your resources you are contented what is available to you and you are not going to trespass your life just only uh, focusing on yourself and ignoring the rest of the community so this is what we can see in these worlds. Of course, they are really very near to the spirits of Islam and Islamic values, which have been almost prevailing over 40 years. Because we the see that uh, uh, not Quran. just in Islam, but also in spirituality, Hajra, you would agree with me that the focus basically is on love to care for other yes. human beings, to mm. care for other beings, yes. and not the love for the material things. Because mm. we do see yes. that people who have a lot of money, who have everything that they can buy, we do see a lot of suicides we do see a lot of mental True. illnesses we'd see lack of contentment there mm. which is supposed to be there if perhaps this is the case that you have everything you are supposed to be contented and, and, and thank you yeah. so much for alluding to it Fahim because if we uh, remove the religious discourses from this entire equation mm. and if you see how things are going on so there is generally a call within the world within the globe that asks us to revert back to the nature-based solutions or yes. going back to the nature right yes. and that was very predictable 
dominant in the COP conference back yes. uh, in the Sharm el Sheikh, where they talked about how uh, there is a need that we need to revert back to natural way of life because that was more suitable, that was more sustainable, mm -hmm. that is more feasible, and the way our human activity is progressing on this planet Earth, we are burning it, we are boiling it, we are heating it, and we are going towards our own self destruction because we are moving away from the nature, right? Mm -hmm. So, and obviously, Quran, obviously, Islam also complements this point of view and it talks about you know reverting back to uh, I mean the spirituality and making sure that uh, the simplicity lives in our lives because um, this is a natural part of our being of a very fa fabric and of a very existence and if it's not there uh, we feel an artificiality and I think your body has a way of responding back to you if you are uh, if you listen to it properly in the manner. And, and sir, we would, uh, before uh, winding up the segment, we would like you to give a message to whoever is watching right now as far as Islam, spirituality and simplicity is concerned. Basically, Islamic spirituality is also connected with that of the life of the simplicity. Right. I mean, there are certain attributes. <coughs> if you just want to excel spiritually <laughs> in your life, you want to give food to your spirit, the spiritual nourishment is one of the attributes is that is you see Rina. Rina means you see you are almost not focusing self-centered just only consuming everything for yourself not caring for the people. So this is something which is liked by the Saturn itself. The attribute which is based on miserliness which is based on you see self-centeredness this is something which is the real obstacle in order to achieve the real spirituality and how we can break this obstacle definitely by adopting the path of moderation. Let me just go to one final relation that is mentioned by Imam Ghazali in his very uh, beautiful book on uh, Ahyal Ulum al -Din. A reference of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam, one of the prophets of Allah. He says that he once met with a certain in human, uh, he was in physical form and Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam, he asked him to whom you are much pleased and to whom you hate a lot. The Satan replied that I, the stingy ones, those who are miserly people, those who are totally holding everything in, the, in their hands, I like, like them the most. And the wicked, uh, generous person who spends his money in the way of Allah, I fear that this generosity may be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why I love the person, those who are almost self-centered in terms of uh, accumulation of wealth and circulation of wealth. So this is one very important obstacle that one we need to come out of ourselves and just look around about the people and then think about the people, those, even those who are deprived of very, very basic necessities of life. And suppose we are just looking towards those uh, dreams that we are unable to fulfill. By this way, another aspect of spirituality is, you see, being grateful yeah. and full of gratitude towards the blessings of Allah. When you think to the people higher than your position and status, definitely then the feelings of ungratefulness will also appear into the, your life. When you look down to the people, those who are deprived of many blessings of Allah, so with this way, you see, you will be thankful towards so many blessings that we are enjoying bestowed upon us and many of the segments of human society, they are deprived of. Right, and this will open the way of spirituality. As right. Thank you so Thank much you. for reiterating this beautiful message. And uh, with that, we would like to wrap up our segment and once again say thank you to Professor Saab for coming here, for having this wonderful conversation. And after a short break, we have some interesting discussion lineup. So don't go anywhere. Good morning.
And welcome back to World This Morning with Hajra Sati and Fahim Bangush. Earlier we were having a very interesting conversation, a very captivating conversation on simplicity and the <coughs> Islamic perspective of simplicity. And we told you earlier that we would be having a very interesting discussion uh, regarding uh, culture diplomacy. And Hajra, why don't you take the initiative and introduce our guest for today? Of, of course. So without any further ado, we are very glad that we have been joined by Munir Ahmed. He happens to be climate and culture expert. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much. Walaikum Islam. Thank, thank you very much. Right. Pleasure so, having so, you, sir. So the last time he came on our show, he talked about his book and he has also authored a book and that too in Urdu and that is related to our very institution, the PTV. So, sir, we would like to again ask you what is the book about because it's a very fascinating discussion, fascinating read and with a very fascinating cover of the book. Yeah, so yeah. why don't you go ahead? Uh, uh, thank you so much. If uh, camera can see, sure, uh, sure, this is can. the book. Yes. And uh, it was uh, published... Uh, in uh, May 1990, okay, when uh, uh, May, uh, when uh, PTV was... And, and uh, if you can be kind enough to uh, relate us the title of the book. Uh, title, um, here is the uh, first uh, drama. Okay. And when uh, uh, Kavi Sahab, our great uh, actor, right. yeah. and uh, uh, Tahira right. uh, appeared on uh, the first uh, television play, and that was uh, black and white at that Wonderful. time. Wonderful. Right. And uh, then... Uh, the first uh, uh, puppet show that was uh, Kalia. Right. And before that, I don't know what was the name of it. Uh, I don't remember at the moment. But uh, that was the first very really popular puppet show uh, by uh, Uncle Sargam, uh, Faru Kasar Saab. And uh, I, I believe like uh, uh, they were the uh, history makers. And That's true. all those history makers of uh, Pakistan television and uh, uh, the uh, visual entertainment in Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, the television entertainment and news are in this book. And uh, it is like uh, the first book on that was published uh, on Nuri Nasali computer uh, font. Why I see. And uh, it took me like about uh, three years to complete it. And it was a self-supported, self, uh, it was a self-initiative. And it was not uh, supported by any institution. And um, I believe like uh, every young person has to take uh, certain initiatives that can bring about a change in the society or uh, like contribute uh, to a, a society. The p positive contribution to society is uh, uh, basically uh, the more uh, meaningful uh, that you can uh, do for no. society for Muneet, yourself. Muneet sir, we were earlier talking about Uncle Sargam and yeah. puppeteering yeah. and okay, how it's okay. such okay. a vital yeah. part because Google has paid a tribute and in the form of a doodle. Now. Yes, it's his birthday, yeah. Farooq ah, okay. okay. So, And you also mentioned him. Uh, could you uh, talk about the importance that puppeteering has in the culture of Pakistan on this, this whole region for that matter? And, and what does your book allude to that particular part of Uncle Sargam? Yeah. Uh, Uncle Sargam, uh, uh, it has a chapter on uh, uh, puppetry that mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan television promoted right. and a chapter on uh, Farooq Kasar Saab, like uh, who basically initiated the concept of puppetry in Pakistan. And uh, in 70s, uh, he had, uh, uh, he won a scholarship and he went to uh, uh, Hungary and Romania, I don't know, well, I <laughs> don't exactly remember, but uh, uh, he had, uh, uh, he was the first one to have a professional degree in puppetry. Oh, from uh, uh, on, on the uh, foreign scholarship yes. and afterwards uh, he was uh, hired by uh, uh, PTV uh, yes. for a program yes. and he developed a wonderful uh, team of uh, uh, puppeteers. If you and can see the visuals yeah. on the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah that, is, that is one, the, the black and white time, <laughs> yes, you know. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and uh, Kalia or uh, the Uncle Sargam show yes. that was uh, the longest programs that uh, PTB produced ever. Yes. And um, Tariq Aziz's show was also one of the uh, oh longest yes. produced oh yes. presented program. Right. And uh, I believe like uh, such kind of initiative has changed the cultural landscape of Pakistan. Uh, PTB has major role in uh, educating people and uh, promoting culture of Pakistan and making them more aware about the different cultures of Pakistan. Not only the different cultures of Pakistan, but also the foreign cultures of Pakistan. 
that is the best uh, role that PTV has played over these years. Right. And whatever uh, uh, cultural uh, scene that we have at the moment or the cultural uh, uh, awareness that we have, uh, Pakistan television has uh, the uh, very important role in it. And we have to take uh, uh, this uh, uh, cultural um, promotion or cultural diplomacy to the next level. You're, you're right, Manish Saab, and uh, PTV still, till date, tries its level best in order to stay in touch with the roots, in touch with all the cultural mm. aspects of Pakistan. But overall, if we see media, you've seen PTV very closely, yeah. the good times, the golden times of PTV very times. closely, right? But if we see today the overall media of Pakistan, we don't see that cultural aspect, that golden aspect being emanated from the uh, other media channels and outlets. So why is that so? Why uh, are the fact, trends uh, changing? In fact, uh, uh, PTV's objective was to educate and inform people. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, the other media groups or the channels, they are mostly commercial. Right. And like even uh, their political talk shows or uh, the t uh, television plays, they merely reflect uh, what uh, is our culture or the social values that we have. That is quite unfortunately, most of them are more inspired to commercial motives. Hmm. Uh, but uh, PTV still, uh, you know, is uh, a very uh, a family entertainment channels. And uh, we have... Uh, more information on uh, PTV channels. Even PTV World, whenever uh, you watch it, you will have uh, much more Pakistani in it. Yes, right. that's so true. That is very important. True. Uh, uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, TV channels or the radio or the other media outlet uh, shall be reflecting what uh, uh, Pakistan's culture is, what Pakistan's social values are, what is, are the uh, best uh, destinations of uh, Pakistan are to promote uh, heritage and tourism. Very and true. even we have a very important uh, religious sites. We have uh, the deep roots of different religions in, uh, in Pakistan. Basically, Pakistan is a land of uh, inclusive human, humanism, basically. Exactly. Uh, we can find uh, uh, temples here, Gandhara civilization or the Indus civilization or uh, the Hunza or the culture, you know, Mehargar uh, is the oldest civilization yeah. that was discovered in Pakistan. True. So we shall be proud of it and we shall have, uh, uh, I believe, uh, a very uh, uh, integrated and very inclusive policy to promote uh, Pakistan's culture for our uh, foreign relations. Right. So, sir, you have closely observed the two times uh, or two eras I would like to categorize and I would label the dramas that were produced in the PTV in one category and after the privatization, the dramas that mm. are being produced mm. in the second category. How do you see the transition between the two periods? Because culture is not a stagnant thing. It is constantly evolving. It is yeah. constantly getting uh, lots of interaction with other cultures. It's changing. Yeah. Um, and uh, how do you see that reflects our cultural values or norms and what were the good things, what were the bad things? How do you see the comparison between the two eras? Uh, you are quite right. Uh, 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 culture is not uh, stag uh, stagnant. You right. know? Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, keep on uh, evolving yes. and uh, keep on changing. True. Uh, but uh, the basic values of a society remains the same. Yes. For example, if I have to be honest, then I have to be honest. Hmm. If I have, I have to be loyal to my motherland, I have to be loyal to my... Hmm. The, all the values remain the same. But sometimes, uh, with the changing times, uh, we commercialize our, uh, our values. Right. And that is, uh, I believe, like uh, we need to understand how much, uh, 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 up to what extent uh, we need to commercialize our, uh, our, our values. Uh, but the most of the dramas that we uh, uh, watch now, right. uh, they are uh, sometimes when I roam around the universities and different cultures, I really don't see the much of it. Yes. Maybe yes. like 1% uh, of that that is being projected you know, in all 110% of dramas true, or plays, tel television plays. Very that is yeah. not our society basically. 
but uh, just to glamorize the place. Exactly. Glamour, glamour, glamour is different from the values. And uh, even if uh, uh, if you watch uh, different uh, uh, international movies, hmm. for example, if you uh, watch like the British movies or the Hollywood movies, and you will have their values still intact in their uh, uh, um, yes. movies. Because, because that culture prevails over there. Yes. But we are, ref they might have uh, a little bit uh, glamour, but uh, the rationalized gra glamour. Yes. We are over projecting glamour in our uh, uh, society and the creating fantasy and, and so uh, selling fantasy. That is, I believe, uh, is a crime because uh, the country like us is not a glamorous society yes and it is not uh, uh, the uh, kind of fantasy that we have we are under developing country with like 49% uh, of uh, uh, people living below the uh, poverty line or yes. around the poverty line and the, the next 30% they are the lower middle class and 20% are uh, middle class rich or the super rich type of people and and uh, only like one or two percent can have a life that uh, is uh, a fantasy or a glamour. Because that's what so, I often think about that maybe why we lack tolerance and why we lack empathy is because we're not showing the true picture of yeah. Pakistan. We're not projecting it, n not internationally, not domestically. Yeah. And for example, we used to have dramas like Manchaleka Soda, projecting yeah, that is wonderful. spirituality, projecting yeah, yeah, something yeah. that's mm. part of our culture and still is. Mm. But we're not projecting it like we're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that maybe is. the intolerance levels, the uh, apathy in people is because of that don't you think so yeah you are right like if uh, I keep on projecting uh, something that uh, is uh, uh, creating more uh, void or mm. like enhancing void or differences between the classes that we have for example if I am projecting fantasy and fantasy and fantasy or the glamour 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 what uh, 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 there would be, be actually it does not frustration exist frustration in people it would create frustration yeah. and it would create hatred for those who are little more blessed uh, than me right what what actually we are creating we are creating frustration among the people and the frustration cultivates uh, intolerance intolerance for different cultures on the other hand uh, we have uh, glamorized uh, religion more we are just glamorizing religion as well right. and but uh, uh, the actual uh, practices are totally different hmm. so there are many but uh, i still believe uh, i uh, i have been asking uh, different uh, foreign ministers for like uh, uh, three decades uh, to have uh, cultural diplomacy into our uh, uh, foreign policy Right. And, uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, that is not uh, much accepted. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2012, uh, I organized a National Culture for Democracy Festival. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, 2012. And then uh, uh, I, um, I believed that uh, we should uh, mainstream our culture with the uh, experts that we have uh, in uh, Islamabad or the other organizations and now again we are uh, I'm uh, you know uh, with the uh, support of uh, uh, Pakistan National Council of the Arts Ministry of Heritage and Islamabad uh, Foreign Women Association and other uh, partners we uh, are again uh, trying to mainstream the importance of cultural diplomacy in Pakistan so I believe like uh, 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 this way perhaps we uh, may uh, be able to uh, you know uh, leave some uh, good fo uh, footprints uh, sir is it uh, you, you know you you said you've tried a couple of times but right. uh, to no avail do you think that's because in general as a nation we have failed to embrace our culture as it is and do you think there is uh, it's because of a lack of culture policy in Pakistan or uh, do you think there is a void that needs to be filled before we can move forward in promoting the cultural um, the the diplomacy uh, we have so many policies 
Hmm. Uh, we uh, every um, two years, three years, we form uh, a cultural policy. But unfortunately, the matter is, the more important is to implement it, whatever we have. Um, because uh, uh, the cultural policy and its feature, uh, features that we need to implement remain the same. Right. It's the vigor that we lack. And right. uh, basically, the rich culture that we have, as I mentioned, uh, several uh, religious uh, religions were, uh, you know, originated from uh, this land. Yes. True. And uh, the diverse culture that we have, you know, just uh, have a glimpse of uh, all around us. The uh, six ter territories and maybe like if uh, uh, I like uh, divide uh, uh, Pakistan into <coughs> cultural zones, maybe uh, <coughs> more than 13 or uh, 14 uh, right. cultural zones we have. True. So, I believe like uh, if uh, uh, they are uh, uh, projected and uh, if we create some uh, forums that help, uh, uh, you know, reach out to different uh, 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 diplomatic circles in Pakistan or engage them into our cultural activities and this is uh, uh, mainstreamed or like uh, put in our foreign policy, that would certainly help. Uh, 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 Pakistan to connect uh, uh, with other countries. At the moment, uh, we are known as like more uh, intolerant nation or uh, like uh, we are known for uh, the extremism and other things. But the kind of uh, culture that uh, we have uh, basically project uh, peace, uh, harmony, mm -hmm. understanding. At richness and, and diversity and thank you so much for very succinctly putting it out there and obviously no one can deny the soft power of the pop culture, the Absolutely. media because we have seen that how public opinion is swayed, public opinion is manufactured, the content is manufactured because of the power of the pop culture, because of the power of the messages that are reiterated um, in the dramas, in the films, in the movies and this is the one aspect of our culture that we need to claim more and project it more. So with that we will say thank you so much for uh, to Sir for coming here. It's an absolute for pleasure it has been uh, talking for, to you. For coming here and for having this discussion and we will continue to have such a sort of discussions more because uh, we claim our culture obviously yes. in Pakistani that as uh, someone who was sitting on the PTV world we make sure that we give full representation to our cultural values. So until next time it's a goodbye Allah Hafiz and good morning.